See, what had happened was a pandemic, right? And because of the pandemic, globally, factories shut down. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am excited about today's topic and also a little apprehensive. And if you have listened to the Amazon Files podcast for any number of episodes, or maybe this is your first time, and if so, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here and that you're listening. Um, I normally um, am kind of against a retail arbitrage strategy, um, mostly because I do wholesale bundles. And I think that the wholesale bundles are the safest, most competition proof way to sell on Amazon, even beyond private label. And there's lots of different benefits of uh, wholesale bundling. But today is more about retail arbitrage because this is a very unusual year. It has been a very unusual last couple of years with a global pandemic and a global economic uh, crisis, if you will. And so I usually steer clear of retail arbitrage and focus solely on my wholesale bundles. But I wanted to give you um, just a heads up that I will also be participating this year in retail arbitrage. And there's some major reasons why. This year calls for additional money-making strategies to help because of the supply chain issues. See, what had happened was a pandemic, right? And because of the pandemic, globally, factories shut down. People were out of work. People were not producing the same level and volume of products out there. Number one, because people were quarantined at home, even globally, whether it's China or other places, the European Union, every place that manufactures products was on lockdown at some point. And because of that, that disrupts the supply chain. So you think, okay, you know, maybe three months of shutdown or even a month of shutdown wherever and however it happened globally just takes us a couple months to catch up, right? No. There is a long trickle down effect when it comes to this. And here's just like an example of that. So factory shut down for a number of days, weeks or months because of pandemic and we don't want to spread virus. So those people are at home quarantining. They come back and now they're considerably, say, three months behind on production. But you can't just ramp up production that fast. Sometimes we just call it a loss and say, okay, there's three months we didn't produce this product, so uh, too bad. But then what happens is there's then shortages of the number of employees. I don't know if you've seen anything in your area, but here in the Southeast Michigan area, every single place is hiring workers. Every place is hiring and there's just not enough people to that are working. Now, I don't know where all the people have gone. I don't know if people are turning to more online businesses and working from home, which yay, that's great for them. But there is a national, if not global, shortage of the amount of workers that can fill those gaps. And because of that, there's not as many truckers to drive the products from one port to uh, distribution centers. There's not as many people working at the seaports to import. Also, there was an importing um, halt at some point during the pandemic, which then prevented those goods from coming into various countries for various reasons. So that has created a supply chain nightmare. And because of that, we have to consider all the things and how are we going to get these different products in different times. I don't know about you, but as I have been uh, ordering things from wholesalers and, and dealing with some of those things, um, there, there's been a major disruption. And number one, the amount of products that are available, the amount of products that have been delivered and are av available for sale, and the amount of people willing or able to get those goods from even my wholesaler to then my prep center or me, and then even at Amazon. Have you noticed in Amazon that there is a, a taking a lot longer for your items to check in? And so the reason that there is all this stuff is simply because of the supply chain. Globally, everything was disrupted. And because of that, there's just prices are rising. Things are, are not arriving as, as often and as much as people want them to. There's a shortage of even manufacturing raw materials to then produce 
the same products at the same level. So this is our current reality, regardless of what we think and feel about all these things and what could be, should be it. This is what is. This is our reality right now in September of 2021. And so as we're looking down uh, through Q4 coming up really, really soon here, like literally in 10 days, that uh, Q4 begins. And what happens with Q4 is lots of very big holidays and celebrations and the biggest money-making opportunities opportunity season of our entire Amazon year. So I don't know about you, but I love Q4 because I usually triple and quadruple my sales in the last three months of the year because of all the different holiday-based products and just the simple fact that people buy more and spend more during these times. Now, this Q4 will be a little bit different. Of course, we can't necessarily base that on last year, year before, whatever, because so much has changed in the world, in the universe, in the economy, that there are some certain steady eddies that we can kind of focus on. But what is specifically changing is supply chains. And I have even had this as of this week, pre-ordered pre -ordered items in for Q4, for the Christmas and Thanksgiving holidays, back in April and May of this this year. This is when wholesalers um, usually have their deadlines to order for Christmas time. Why? Because they order from manufacturers and then they get it over to us on time and they don't want to spend too much, you know, buy too much and then not be able to sell it. So we have to pre-order. Then they order from their manufacturers and have it shipped here right perfectly on time for Q4. So as years pass, this has been the process. And of course, I relied and counted on that from all of my vendors just the same. I'm thinking we're out of the woods, right? We're, we're clear because we ordered all these things back in May and April. Much to our dismay, we have heard from several of our wholesale distributors and vendors that have said, thank you, but unfortunately, these items are either A, not coming in, or we're out for the season because we couldn't deliver all of these to everyone because the manufacturer actually shorted us an entire container. Um, that's probably thousands of products and thousands of dollars. So we were kind of stuck with a couple of our vendors telling us that the stuff we ordered for Q4 is no longer going to be arriving at all. Now, this is terrible news. I mean, we, especially when you're planning your, your Q4 and you're planning financially for the products you're going to spend money on and hopefully projecting your profits and things like that. It was kind of like, um, oh, well, sorry, you placed this order too bad. We're not going to be able to, to give you your goods. And so it's like, okay, time for plan B. And so we, are, we you know, contacted our other vendors and tried to kind of uh, ramp up some of our stock. And again, those vendors as well are having supply issues and they're out of stock on certain things or they're just not sure when and how things are going to be coming in. This is going to be a common problem through the rest of this year, if not into 2022. So just be aware and put your patience on and double and triple check that your vendors are delivering on time, that you're still going to get your goods. If they're if you expected a certain ship date and they haven't produced that, then follow up with them and ask them when and how they're going to be producing those um, ETAs, estimated times of delivery, arrival, all that stuff, because your Q4 can definitely be impacted by these. But because of this year being different and all of the different supply chains, I'm not going to sit on my hands and just go, oh, well, woe is me. The pandemic has slowed down supply chains, and I guess I just don't have a lot to sell for Q4. Oh, well, it's going to be a bad year. No, that's not what's happening. Instead, it's like, okay, well, there are places and people and stores that have inventory on their shelves right now. And this brings back a good, my good old friend, retail arbitrage. Now, I know, and I've been telling you guys for many years and even telling other people there that there are many risks involved with retail arbitrage. It is a great way to get started, to get your feet wet in Amazon. I don't recommend it long-term for a lot of reasons. If you want to know the full episode of that, go back several episodes. Um, I don't know the episode number right now, but look for retail arbitrage or um Retail Arbitrage is a Prison is another one of the episodes. And I talk about those specific things because I am very seasoned in retail arbitrage. I did it for many, many years. Um, but what I realized is it wasn't sustainable and or scalable at a level that I was comfortable with. And there's some risks involved with, you know, inauthentic claims, restricted products, proof of authenticity to the point where I prefer wholesale bundles because A, it keeps away all the competition. And B, I have a lot more control over the listing, the products, uh, 
and I just have a creative and competitive advantage by creating wholesale bundles. So that is my number one preferred method. And right now we're almost entirely uh, wholesale bundles. But during this Q4 and starting, uh, pretty much started last month, but starting now even, uh, I am going to be supplementing with uh, retail arbitrage because right now some of the actual brick and mortar stores out there are the only places that actually have inventory. So, you know, the newest, trendiest type of stuff um, is not arriving as fast as people want it. People have been out for months on some of the, the toy products and items that they've had. So I want to make it very clear that although I don't promote this on a regular basis, um, you got to do what you got to do when the moment strikes. Just like in the beginning of the pandemic when Amazon restricted any regular products from being sent in and they only al allowed essential products, whatever that means, um, we shifted quickly into merchandise fulfilling because what choice did we have either go out of business or just wait along until Amazon changes their mind or adapt and change quickly to keep the money flowing and that's what we always have to do in business we never know the who what when where why and how different regulations different rules different policies um, supply chain issues tons of things as business owners are completely outside of our control so what we can do is see them, notice them, and be proactive in order to continue business as usual while you're adapting some of your temporary strategies. And so that's what we're doing this year in our business. We are doing some temporary strategies of uh, introducing retail arbitrage again for a short period of time to cover Q the Q4 season. And I'm going to go over briefly the risks involved in this, just so you're aware. And of course, I'm saying them out loud again for myself so that I'm extra careful about the things I sell on retail arbitrage for these specific reasons. So some of the risks involved are restricted products. Now, with restricted products or and or brands, that can happen at any time. So you go to the store, you stock up on a whole bunch of stuff that you know is going to sell really, really well. You send it into Amazon, it reaches the shelves, maybe you sell a few and all of a sudden you get this horrible email from Amazon that say, we're sorry, a such and such brand has restricted their brand and you are not an authorized seller. Please apply here. And you try to apply here and it basically says, give us your wholesale invoices or else you cannot sell this product. Um, this has happened to hundreds if not thousands of people that I know that have sold on Amazon doing retail arbitrage and they're just either A, stuck with all this inventory or they try to recall it and take it back to their original store if and when they have receipts and it's just kind of a nightmare. So when it comes to those restricted products, restricted brands, um, potential issues for um, bigger brands to do that, um, again, there's no control that you have over it. You're just gonna have to take the risk and hope that um, that that doesn't happen to you, but there's really no way to predict it and there's no way to get around it. Um, sometimes they let you sell through your inventory and sometimes they don't. We got stuck with a few things a few years back when we were selling something and all of a sudden Amazon's like, just kidding, you're no longer allowed to sell this brand and no one else is allowed to apply. And it's just the, the, the end. We got stuck with you know hundreds of dollars of inventory from a specific brand and it was kind of a nightmare. And we did order it wholesale and they still didn't, they, they just, it was a brand level restriction and there was nothing that we could do. So that can happen to the best of us. We ended up ditching it on eBay and some other um, outlets to kind of sell through that wholesale distributors and stuff. So that was fine, but you don't want to have to do that in the middle of, of Q4. So just paying attention to some of those restricted brands. Another thing is um, like in, inauthentic claimed, inauthentic claims, IP claims. Sometimes brands will, they don't like it, but they don't know how to stop you. And they really legally can't stop you from selling their products. So sometimes people report it as inauthentic and then you have to go through the proof of authenticity of your items. And this is always a pain in the neck and um, a long drawn out process that shouldn't be because they want you to prove that your items are legitimate and that you bought them for a, a legitimate source because some competitor or the brand owner reported you as inauthentic. It's usually not a customer or if they purchased one from you and then said that. And of course, the burden of proof is on you. So this is where you have to keep really, really good receipts, making sure that the UPC codes on the box or 
tag or whatever product that you have matches the one on the cash register receipt. It needs to be the, the UPC code, not like a store code, like Marshall's, Ross, TJ Maxx, even I think Tuesday morning, some of these places, they have their own barcode system. And so that's not a UPC code that, that you can put there and say, oh, this register receipt matches this retail arbitrage item. So if you're buying things from stores like that, make sure that you take pictures of the item with the receipt that can kind of coincide because otherwise you're going to get screwed because they're, you're, they're, the UPC codes aren't going to match the ones on the receipt. And then they're going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't use this to prove that because there's no evidence. So that's another risk involved. So you're going to have to be extra diligent about certain things like that. Again, stay away from really high end expensive brands that are known for being reported as in inauthentic um, because it's just not worth the risk. We're talking about different shoe brands, uh, purse brands, clothing brands, things like that. Any sort of defects on any of these products. You just don't want to be involved in that. But the good news is there's millions of products to be able to be sold on Amazon via retail arbitrage or any sort of sourcing method. So um, fear not. There's plenty of opportunity there, but don't always go after these big expensive brands because those are the most risky involved. And also the last one is cease and desist letters from brands. Now, brands will send, like, say you sell, you, you get through the door and you end up listing, you know, a KitchenAid product or something. And then you get this wonderful email cease and desist from KitchenAid saying, you are not authorized to sell these products on Amazon. If you don't stop, we're going to sue you or we're going to, you know, take down your listing or your account will be suspended. All kinds of different threats. The reason they send these is because they have no other legal recourse to pursue you in, in the sense that, you're a third party reseller and that's actually perfectly legal as long as your item is in fact authentic and not some sort of fake that you created or bought as a fake. And whether or not you know something's a fake or not, is not it doesn't matter. It's your job to uh, authenticate said items and then sell uh, authentic items on Amazon. So with these cease and desist, most people just say, okay, I'll stop selling your item. I'm sorry, whatever else. Um, but sometimes you can just ignore that because you're not doing anything illegal. Um, now, people worry about these brands taking inappropriate black hat uh, actions against them, which is completely a valid fear because the, that thing, that stuff has been happening for years now on Amazon. Um, you're going to hear from Leslie um, Hensel from Riverbend Consulting um, next week, I believe, uh, for our quarterly updates on Amazon policies, all the non so fun stuff, but stuff we need to know uh, going forward to protect ourselves and our account and just move forward in a healthy way on Amazon. Um, her and her team are fantastic and they have a lot of insider information. So stay tuned for that episode next week so that we can get our quarterly updates. And also, um, so we can maybe talk with her about the cease and desist as well and see, you know, what her, her opinions and stuff like that are, because you don't want to get into any trouble with that. So those are the major risks of doing retail arbitrage is that there's always some risk involved and things like that, because you just never know what can happen, what can occur with these things. So now that you fully understand the risks involved and why I don't normally uh, risk my over seven figure yearly account for retail arbitrage issues, because I just don't want to be shut down or, or suspended. I don't want inauthentic claims or um, IP claims or things like that on my account. I'd rather just not. I'd rather just have my wholesale bundles that I created that are within my brand registered trademark brand that then don't step on anybody's toes. And it just we all if we all can play nice, then we don't have issues. Um, but that's Desperate times call for desperate measures, and I have thousands of dollars of inventory that is not coming in for Q4 now because um, my vendors are their containers are held up or their manufacturers have shut down for too long and they can't keep up with production. Whatever the excuse is, so this year it's worth the risk to continue our sales strategies and sell as much as we can for Q4 because this is the best time of year to do so. So, what are those strategies? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We're going to talk about what to focus on, where to shop. Uh, when to shop and a few other strategies. And I'm going to set you up for the best success I possibly can while you're supplementing with your retail arbitrage. So first of all, what am I going to focus on? You guys, I'm just sharing my personal strategies for this year, supplementing my wholesale bundles with um, some retail arbitrage this year, just to kind of get 
just to kind of supplement those products there. So, you know, if you have other strategies, feel, feel free to leave comments. You can come to the Facebook group. Speaking of, I forgot to mention that we do have a Facebook group of seller, community sellers, Amazon, people who speak your language, right? Amazon sellers um, for the Facebook group. It's mommyincome.com slash join us. And you always need a code word because we don't like spammers and people that are in a thousands of groups to just like try to sell you stuff or a pedal their, you know, goods and services. We all love goods and services, but this is not the place for that. This is a community where we help each other answer questions and start making profit. So um, the, the code is hashtag retail, um, their code word and mommyincome.com slash join us in order to get into the Facebook group. And you know, you just want to be part of this club, you guys. Um, we help each other. We're, we're um, try to answer questions. People answer questions for you. Um, there's lots of good experienced sellers in there that can really help you with things like PPC and creating your bundle brand and all these different things. So make sure you come into the Facebook group there. So um, what are we going to focus on? Well, what I'm going to focus on this year is items that I'm already Already buying from my suppliers that they're out of because here's the deal as I order even replenishable bundles that I have all of these items that I buy from wholesalers are available in the retail world somewhere so the good news is I can probably get my hands on similar bundles or bundle components directly from my wholesaler even though they don't have them distribution channels or looking at the retail price of some of these things so that's where the sticky wicket comes in, right? Because like I prefer my wholesale pricing, but if there's a retailer out there that says, you know, sells this or that, that you can buy at a reasonable price, now you have stock and maybe you just bump your price up a couple dollars to make up for the wholesale cost that you're not getting. So one of the first things I'm focusing on is getting the products that I already ordered that never showed up um, from different retailers. I just noticed this past weekend, I went grocery shopping and one of the products that we have Meyer here in Michigan, I'm not sure where you guys are from, or if you have Meyer, I think, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, maybe Wisconsin. There's like five states. It's like a really nice super Walmart, only way nicer. I just, I love Meyer versus Walmart, but we're just, that's just where we live. Um, but anyway, the, those, that store has a couple of the products that I order wholesale. And so I'm going to go there and scoop them up and use different deals and coupons and, and store um rewards and things like that to be able to buy these items because I'm out of stock of them and I'm not getting them back the rest of the year. And they also have some Christmas and holiday stuff. So look for items that you're already carrying or already selling online at brick and mortar retail stores. They have stock. You can buy it off their shelf and send it into Amazon. Another thing that I haven't really sold in, in quite a few years and I used to be an expert on is toys for Q4. And when my kids were littler, I, you know, was always in that world and knew and understood toys a lot. And I still do because I still have a 10 year old that, um, you know, is into toys and different things. So I'm going to be focusing on uh, toys uh, specifically because it's Q4 and a lot of people buy toys. But guess what? People buy all kinds of stuff for Q4, not just toys. So if that's not your forte, great. That's something that you can, you know, different things that you can focus on. Another uh, few categories and items that I'm going to be looking for is household commodities and replenishable items. Hello, toilet paper shortage uh, a couple of years, you know, a couple months, whenever that was. Maybe there's still a shortage. I don't know. But in the beginning of the pandemic, this was such an issue. Um, so not necessarily toilet paper, but other uh, random household commodities that seem to be um, stuff that people use on a regular basis, maybe not like toilet paper, because I know some of those things still have pricing conditions and things like that. But there's other smaller stuff that people use regularly that are often overlooked, yet people are buying them consistently. So at looking around your bathroom, your kitchen, some of those replenishable items that you're using up, throwing away, replacing, um, those are things you want to look for. Food and grocery items, specifically specialty items for the Q4 holiday. But food and grocery is growing tremendously as people are, you know, got used to shopping online during the pandemic. A lot of them are still shopping online for grocery items and main staples like that. So a small, a small to the large stuff. I mean, any, anywhere from soda, 12 packs of soda, two liter bottles, um, spices, packets, things that have really long shelf lives. Um, those are perfect items to not only buy, but also bundles. So we're not just talking about single unit items here, which is great for retail arbitrage. You know, you just scan it and ship it in, but also 
considering creating those bundles for these different things as well. So always looking at those items in the food and grocery. Um, that's something that kind of never goes out of style. Be, be very careful of your, um, your expiration dates and things like that so that you're, you're aware of that. If you've never done food or grocery, look up some videos on um, expiration dates and how to label those things just to make sure you're keeping track because you don't want to accidentally sell something to somebody that's expired. It's the fastest way to get bad feedback and, you know, just maybe restricted or kicked off of that category. Another strategy I have is the empty shelf syndrome. So one of the best ways to try to find products that are in high demand and low supply is to go to your local, I don't know, Target, Walmart, grocery store, wherever, and look for the empty shelf space. So if you see, like, here's a crazy example. Like last week, my my kids love rice aroni. Don't judge me, but um, rice aroni, right? The main chicken rice aroni. And so a, a couple of weeks back or at the grocery store, there's literally no rice aroni, not any flavor. It's like all gone. Like not just the chicken, but like the chicken jalapeno cheddar is gone and the beef kind of, I mean, just like, there's like no rice aroni Like what happened here? Um, so looking at the blank spots in that and taking note of that. Now, why? Because maybe Meyer is having a shortage of rice aroni but that doesn't mean that every store is, or, you know, people who buy a lot of rice aroni in my area, maybe at 20 minutes down the road and more of a country area, they don't buy as much of that. So they have plenty of stock. So here's where you get to find, you, you take notes on the things that are empty in the shelves around you, and then you go to different areas and see if you can find those products. Because A, that's already showing you that this is in high demand. If it, the shelf is empty underneath that section, you know that there was at least a good demand for that item and they're out of stock and it's gone. Items that aren't out of stock aren't as popular, maybe, or they don't have any supply issues, which means the, the product, the profit's going to be lower. So if you want higher profit items, things that are out of stock, look at your local area of what's out of stock, make note of it, whatever category you're in, whether it's grocery, toys, I mean, the toy aisle near us is empty, shelves are empty. They're trying to like scoot things over and like hang different stuff so it doesn't look as empty. But the reality is it is. There are so many products that are just not available right now. And that's a good sign for you if you can find those. So this is going to take a little hustle. It's going to take a little digging and some research, but it's just a different kind of research. So just be prepared to spend a little bit of extra time. But that is my main strategy is going through looking at where the empty shelves are, making a note of those products, sizes, styles, colors, flavors, whatever, and then look looking for those in other similar stores. So what might be sold out in my area, 15 minutes down the road might have plenty. It just really depends. So that's the good news about retail arbitrage and supply and demand in local areas is that something might be super popular here, but in the South, no one cares about it. So it's one of those types of things that you're reaching a global um, customer base. So just because you're out of it in your area, or maybe it's abundant in your area, doesn't mean other people aren't sold out of it. So the reverse is also true, um, paying attention to those as well. Also, my other strategy of what I'm going to focus on is popular items from last year. So a lot of people are looking for things that are the new trendy items, of course, new video games, new squishmallows, new blah, blah, blah from, from this year, new trends, new colors, new styles for home goods even. But last year's styles are still here and they're not going anywhere. Most trends last three to five years. So the stuff that come, it was coming out last year is still going to be popular this year, although it might not have as many products. So when you're looking at those things, you want to look at um, where to shop for those because your common items, you know, stores only have so much shelf space. And that's the reason why they turn products so quickly and move on to the next thing, because they don't have the shelf space to store anything and everything like an Amazon store would, where you can sell something five years old and people are still looking for it. But, you know, your local store doesn't have the space to store things for five years on their shelves. They've got to be able to move product because the real estate is only so big on their shelves. So where to shop is, is some of these things. Um, where to shop for some of these are smaller stores, smaller stores um, in rural areas, areas that aren't as popular, aren't as populous, or um, it, say you live in a huge metropolitan area or something like that, where there's say, you know, 
five Walmarts within, you know, 15 miles, 20 miles, something like that, then each store could have different things and different strategies. There's good ways to check out the stock on certain things as well. So use brickseek.com to look at stock levels on certain places like Target and, and other things. You might be able to look up a UPC and see who's got it in stock and how many they have and all that kind of stuff. That's a good resource for you to be able to check that if you already know the product that you're looking for. Um, but another place I'm going to be shopping is Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, eBay. Once I find some target items that I know I want to um, carry on Amazon, I know that they're going to be good buys for the entire season. I'm going to start, start scouring all of those sites and make sure that everything, even locally, people are selling these items um, that I can scoop them up in a hurry. Another one of my favorite retail arbitrage strategies is looking for unusual items in specific niche stores. So um, years back, I had this great honey hole. I used to go to a specific hardware store because this hardware store had this small toy section in the corner where they used to carry, you know, older Lego sets and Star Wars figures and Barbie dolls and different things that they haven't sold in a few years. Because honestly, how many people buy toys at the hardware store? I mean, I don't, my daughter hates going to like Menards and like Home Depot depot and stores like that. There's like nothing that appeals to her there. So she's like, I don't want to go to that store. Um, so the hardware store is kind of the same. I don't know why they ever had toys there, but they decided there was a market for it. But stuff like that, unusual items in unusual places. The gas station is a great place to buy those mini little plush items. Why the little beanie boos or bean bags or whatever those things are, because they carry some of this stuff, but it's not something that they regularly sell. And it's not where people, retail arbitragers and people, resellers are going to look for these things. So hidden corners of places like that. It's a great place to look for unusual items in those spots. Um, hardware store, grocery store, drug stores, discount stores. Let's talk alleys and big lots and um, Tuesday mornings and, you know, TJ Maxx, all these places are all like discount stores. So looking for those particular products in those stores, of course, every retail arbitrager probably knows about these places, but in particular, you want to focus on things that might've been super popular last year because they're still going to carry some, some profit this year as well. Don't forget to hit up, um, thrift stores and local, um, you know, like scratch and dent type places and wholesale outlets for places near you. Now, when I say wholesale outlets, like most of those are like food based um, that I've seen in my area. Like you'll see like the Aunt Millie's Bakery food outlet where they sell, you know, overstock of bread and pastry items and things like that. Well, clearly you can't sell those on Amazon because of the shelf life. You could potentially merchant fulfill those things, but you know, that's totally up to you as long as the dates are within, you know, Amazon's rules. Um, but looking for places like that, because sometimes these places have longer shelf lives of different things. And it's something that you can literally capitalize on because those prices are probably really good. Um, it's just little places to uncover that might be local to you that you can reach a global base with some of these things. Um, another, okay. Now when to shop the, when to shop is right now, right now through probably about December 10th. I say December 10th because, um, the Amazon is notorious for having slow check-in times in mid December and you don't want your items to reach after the holiday that you're focusing on. If it's not a holiday based item, then it probably doesn't matter. But like, good luck selling Christmas tree stands after, you know, December 20th or something like that. It's just really a difficult sell with certain things like that that are based on specific holidays. So um, use your best judgment with that. I would not probably send in things that you expect to sell within this month that uh, within that month um, after that date. So just keep that in mind. But when and how to shop is right here and right now and locally to you. And don't be afraid to map out you know, certain areas and look for certain things. You're going to have to do a little bit of groundwork, a little pavement pounding, a little bit of research um, before you're, you know, stocking up on these things. But it's really important to remember that as supply is down and demand is up, profits are up as well. Now, some of you might, I don't know if you're like me, but I tend to struggle with guilt sometimes when it comes to Q4, when I know that someone's really looking for this product and I could literally make a killing off of it because I found this hidden gem. And so we're always thinking about pricing and like, oh, should I charge that much? Or what's the going rate? Um, the reality is 
it's not an essential item if you're selling, you know, a Hatchimal or some sort of, you know, coveted toy for the year. So if somebody really wants that and it's really in demand and and has a low supply, um, that's where pricing markets go up. And that's really just part of it because that item is not essential to live. Let's be real. Your child, my child, anyone's child does not need a gaming system to survive life. So we're not talking about jacking up prices of like hand sanitizer that could literally save a life at this point. Um, we're talking about toy luxury items or luxury items that like we could all live without, but people really want for the holidays. So throw your guilt out the window when it comes to that. People who really want it will pay the going rate. They might not like it, but you know, they're supporting a small business like you. And so, you know, you have to get rid of some of the guilt with that, especially if it's a luxury item. Um, and anything that's not a necessity can, is considered a luxury item. So um, you're welcome. <laughs> no more guilt for you. So that is the, the those are the, the main strategies. The last strategy that I really want to talk about with all of this retail arbitrage is simply going wide and not deep. Going wide, meaning buy a huge variety of products in different categories, because you just never know what and who and how the competition is going to look like. So I'd rather buy 10 of something instead of 100 of something because you just don't know how it's going to go. If there is a super low supply uh, on Amazon and otherwise, then yeah, I'd probably clear the shelf and take my chances. But if you see two or three sellers selling the same thing and it looks like they have quite a bit of stock, don't go super deep on those items. Instead, try a wide variety of products and different product categories. If you're ungated and in almost everything um, go with those categories. But if you're not, there's still plenty of categories to supply products to. And remembering that, um, you know, this is a global, you're reaching a global market. It's not just the people in your area and things like that. So just do your due diligence to see who, when, how of selling. There's tons of apps and data out there to be able to read charts to see was this a good product last year. And uh, this is where we can kind of um, shrug our shoulders at Amazon's in stock level and things like that, because Amazon's going to have a hard time with stock as well. It's not just uh, us that's affecting this. This is uh, affecting everybody globally, even Amazon themselves being able to stock. So they are going to heavily rely on us as uh, third party sellers to be bringing in quality inventory for Q4. Um, I will hope that they will keep up with this and be able to um, supply the right personnel to help move all this stuff along, but that's to be determined. Um, so pay attention to the supply and demand looking around in your area and fill the gaps because people like um, if I'm walking into Target or I'm walking in somewhere and I'm looking for this product and I don't see it on the shelf, where is the first place I'm going to turn to to find that item? Let's just be real. It's Amazon. It's, it's Amazon. So if it's not in your local store, you're going to want to look on Amazon for it, right? And so is everybody else. And so because of that, it's really important to put those things on Amazon and have amp ample stock there as well, because the local stores are going to be out of things and people are going to turn to online to be able to find them. So just keep that in mind. Go wide and not deep. A multiple long range variety of different products to sell will keep your um, profits high and your risk low. So you really want to pay attention to going wide and not deep when it comes to this particular season of, of selling. Also, um, you know, we don't know when these, these containers and shipments are going to finally arrive at Amazon because all of these products that are missing from the shelves are still going to be produced at some point, or maybe they're already in production. Maybe they're even in transit. The problem with transit is that there are a lot of shipping containers sitting at ports unopened, just waiting for the next available worker to unload said thing and get it through customs and then get it to the right truck to then get it to the right warehouse. So those products might be ready and available at some point. We just don't know when. That could be November 25th. That could be December 15th. That could be 2022. So this is the reason why I'm saying to go wide and not deep because you never know when or if Amazon or some other really big deep pocket retailer is going to jump on a listing and have, you know, 
unlimited stock or so we see. So don't go too much into some of these things because you don't want to run the risk of you selling it at $29.99 and Amazon finally gets a shipment of 5,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 of these things and their price is $19.99. Then you've literally screwed yourself. So because of that, I say go wide and not deep and keep uh, and do it more often. This is the struggle is real, you guys. You want to keep in business. You want to stay above the curve. You want to have um, growing sales instead of uh, waning sales this Q4. You're going to have to work a little harder. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you. Like, this is Q4. We all work harder in Q4 because this is where we make the bulk of our money, right? And we hope that we have a little bit more of a balance of evergreen bundles, which, you know, is my life goal. And most of the time that that is true. But in this particular situation, we're going to have to work longer and harder. You're going to see me out in stores buying stuff for retail arbitrage and shipping it in and sending it to the prep center or whatever it is because I have to supplement in order to make ends meet for my own store. And so paying attention to these things and, and, and going wide and not deep is the best strategy to not get stuck with certain types of products and you know not knowing what to do with it or having a bunch on hand. Um, and the last and final thing is really to pay attention to your pricing. Um, paying attention to your pricing really helps to be aware of the different pricing strategies that are out there. Like I just mentioned, like if Amazon's out of stock on something and you have it in stock and then all of a sudden they come back in stock, pricing is going to be different. So with uh, bundles, it's not, you don't worry as much about pricing because usually you're the only one that has that item and you control the price completely because you control the buy box. It's your brand, it's your bundle and no one else can really jump in or on it. But when you're doing retail arbitrage, straight up um, items that are single unit items, you have way less control over pricing than than anything. So you need to really pay attention to your pricing. And so these are just the strategies that I am personally going to be invoking for the next three months, because honestly, I still want to have a really great Q4. And sometimes when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And so I'm going to be doing a little bit more retail arbitrage in and around my whole areas. And hey, maybe I'll have a few bolos for you. And something for you guys that don't know, bolo is be on the lookout. Um, if there's stuff in my area that is like discontinued and I find a honey hole with something great, you know, I would love to be able to share that with you guys. Make sure you're in the Facebook group um, for that, uh, because I'd love to be able to um, you know, show you guys that stuff. I go live occasionally and show some some goodies and things like that. So looking at these different things, different products and pro, um, strategies, I hope you will um, consider this. If you're not having supply chain issues, great. I hope you're not and that you can just keep uh, doing uh, wholesale bundles for the entire uh, season, which I still plan to do. But with limited supply of certain suppliers and items, I'm going to be doing arbitrage. And that's just the way the business works. You ebbs and flows. It's up and down. Different strategies are invoked in different ways. Um, and so I really hope that you are paying attention to those things. Also, don't forget that if you had missed out on the Q4 Jumpstart class that we did back in July, um, we always do Q4 Jumpstart in July because it's a really good way to get ready for Q4. Well, Q4 is literally uh, starting in a couple of weeks. And um, this is your last opportunity really to get uh, Q4 Jumpstart if you haven't already. And so Q4 Jumpstart is mommyincome.com slash jumpstart. And you can get your uh, Q4 Jumpstart class right there. It's already available to you, ready, live, ready for you to go. And there's tons and tons of strategies of how to do retail arbitrage, how to be prepared for Q4, especially if it's your first Q4 and you really want to kill it this holiday season. Uh, this is the last time it'll be offered uh, this year. It'll be offered until October 1st, which is the first day of Q4. And uh, at that point, you're probably running a little too late to participate. So, but right now it's not too late. You can get in on this, especially for Christmas time. So mommyincome.com slash jumpstart is your opportunity to, to get that course before it goes away for the rest of the year. And I really wish you nothing Nothing but success this Q4. Change your strategies and feel free to come to the Facebook group and share your ideas of different things. Um, we we make it by by living in community. We have a community that we can rely on to talk to each other about these different strategies and you know 
contribute because as part of a good growing community, we need people to ask questions and we need people to answer questions. And so come be a part of the community and share what you know about retail arbitrage, ask your questions and then get to work you guys, because this stuff doesn't work if you don't. So I know you guys could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. And I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon files podcast. I look forward to serving you with the best possible information week after week. Hang in there, work hard, do your best, chase your dreams, and I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.